Some great teachers teach that the Bible, and more specifically the Old Testament, commands a 10% tithe. And let us not forget that Abram, later called Abraham, gave Melchizedek, king of Salem and the priest of the Most High God, 10% of everything that he had. But in the theocratic government that Moses and Israel were under, there was the temple tithe, the priestly tithe, the festival tithe, tithe for the poor, and so on. And adding all these tithes up comes to about 26 to 33 percent. It was basically to run their government, taking care of the sacrifices in the temple, and much more. So these tithes were kind of like taxes. But not being under the law or that system today, we give according to what we can or we want to give, and what would be in alignment with good stewardship. Abraham wasn't under the Mosaic law, so he gave what he wanted to give, and he chose to give 10%. And sometimes I believe Malachi 3 verse 10 is taken out of context in order to instruct us to tithe 10%. God says to the Levites in that verse, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me, or test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Well, the problem with using that verse is that, first of all, they're under the yoke and schoolmaster of the law. We're no longer under law, but grace. And amen to that, because look at what happens if you come under the covenant of law. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. Circumcision here just signifies man's token of coming under a covenant of law with God. And you don't want to go there. And the second problem with using that verse to instruct us to tithe 10% is that God was talking to the Levite priests at a specific time for a specific purpose under a specific covenant, as we just discussed. So you may be able to import and carry over the principle into the New Testament of not robbing God in your giving from that passage, but you certainly can't be a stickler for the percentages, and that it applies to a people under a covenant of grace. So with all that being said, you may only be able to give 2% because of a serious debt that you should strive to pay off as soon as possible, and not purposely running up debt that's not secured, which is all part of being a good steward of the money that God lets you use. But on the other hand, you may not need a lot of the money that you make, and you might be able to give 98%, which is obviously way more than 10%. God knows your finances and your heart. Two scripture references to support this doctrinal position would be 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, which says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2, which says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so you also are to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper, so that there will be no collecting when I come. So there's no exact amount one should be forced to give, but you should give what you can and give gladly from the heart. The church does need money to run and increase ministries for the lost. Just remember, all the money that you have to use is money that God has put in your hands, and it's a test and a challenge. A test of stewardship and a challenge for you to use the money faithfully.